<laughs> Hi, Emma. How are you doing? Hi, I'm very well, thank you. I mean, it's really good to have you here. It's great to be here, to be honest. For some people, honestly, it's it's not like oh, they wanted you, they wanted you out of the house. They actually most of your fans or viewers actually saw you at the finals. So now that you're here, a week before the finals, I'll first of all say congratulations to you. Yeah, thank you so much. And on the other side, we're not happy that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, first I'll say thank you because nine yeah. weeks, obviously, admittedly, is no beans. Mm. Like, a lot of people left second week, third week. I was in there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks. Mm -hmm. I would take that for granted. I did the best that I could. Um, and coming out and seeing how much I'm loved and I appreciate so the love, Coolest Tribe. Wow, it's really, it's really, it's really, it's really. Um, I appreciate the love and I understand how people could have seen that um, or projected me to be a winner, uh, to, to come out the winner. But I believe so much in God's plan. I feel, I feel like if it happened, that's God's plan. Like nothing mm -hmm. will happen under the nose of it, you know? The almighty that and, and whatever it is i'm gonna do the work to get my part to get to wherever the plan of god is for me and, and that's what i'm getting up to the work so let's just talk about your ancestries yeah yeah from your earrings to your nose rings to your you know rings and everything like it's it's you know it's actually speaks more about you mm -hmm. about it about your personality and the kind of person who you are in the house I remember there was a conversation with yourself and Adekule in the garden when Adekule was like, he wants one of your rings. And you're like, no, it's everything has something. Yeah, you know, like all, there's a connection yeah, with you and the all, rings. Yeah, yeah. What's, that, what's the connection like? Um, I, I really believe in the essence of what it means to be African as it is defined by Africans. Um, I believe accessories are very basic. Um, part of being African, um, from kings to queens to even the 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 mass whatever it is how mm. we want to define the classification that divi divides society and whatnot and this reading history reading into history this thing symbolizes a lot and mm. it, for me it's just accepting what all the things that come together to project what life means in general like mm. death life um trees being a part of life um the cross being a symbol for like uh, Christianity and all of that, a part towards me knowing myself. I went to church. I still believe very much in the gospel of Christ. Uh, I also believe so much in the spirituality of the African people mm. and what it symbolizes over time. You know, light, darkness, everything that symbolizes yeah. life and everything. And just you know, embody that within like accessories, the beads, uh, the rings, and everything. The car so rings. They, yeah, they all a part of me. Like, and I don't give any of this out. Not my beads. Not my rings. Never. <laughs> Yeah, it would never happen. I'm actually asking on behalf of because he really wanted one in the house yeah. and he said no to him. But it's fine. But has anyone ever told you that it looked like um, Dennis Rodman of the Chicago Bulls? Yeah, I get I, I got that a lot on the basketball court because but yeah, but then again, yeah, he's a major inspiration. He did this um, playing basketball. It's something different. He was absolutely different. And difference is exactly what I stand mm. for because within individuals, being individuals as a collective society. I feel like people will be different and accepting that is allowing people to be who they are and accepting that and being free enough to be who you are and then people being able to accept who you are. And I think mm. if we embody this, this, this things, uh, this, this attributes, we'll be able to be ourselves, whoever it is that we are within the template of society. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Okay, so um, can you just tell us about your two women? And how long you guys have been in the relationship? Just uh, quickly. Yeah, sure, sure thing, sure thing, sure thing. Um, so Margarita, a beautiful woman. I was on tour in Germany um, two months there at the time. I think, uh, yeah, two months and some. Um, we're creating a piece. Um, she was part of the students that came around to see what, what it was that we were creating, dance, uh, theater, uh, to test the, the quality of the work that we were creating at the time. And uh, it was a very classical story across the room, smiles and everything. Uh, we connected. She got lost for a bit, tried to get her an uh, email, and then finally got her. She came around. We spoke. There was a drama between all that we met. Um, then I came back. She was the one that told me she was able to belong to more than one person. I started to accept that because I wanted to be with her. Mm. I started to make a journey towards an accept, uh, acceptance of that theory. And then I finally found my peace with it. And then I started to want the same thing. And then met uh, coming back because it was a long, Basically, this was a long distance yeah. thing. I feel like uh, if it wasn't, I'd just literally, because that was my knowledge, African boy, you know, grew up with the monopolos. Uh, this, this is the perfect thing, one man, one woman. It still is, people decide what they want for themselves sure. and everything is still this perfect within whatever anyone wants to define perfection to mean for them. And I respect that, actually, we do. Um, it's just, I go, I go introduce something different. I totally bought into it, started to make a journey towards understanding for myself, and I did. And then because, I think because the thing that most, uh, some of, one of the inspiration towards like me accepting it was the 
fact that I had a long distance relationship, I needed to feel loved. Mm -hmm. And over time, we try to meet uh, visas and everything, denied and all of that. It, it kind of like put an emotional tom wire for me. It was becoming a very tumultuous uh, thing for me emotionally. And then I spoke to her like, I like to start something with people. I tried to meet other people, it didn't work because they didn't think it was possible. And then I met uh, Blessing and then she accepted it and made a journey towards it. And now, yeah. And then you met Allison in the house. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, <laughs> to be honest, like, before I went in the house, I promised my two queens that I wasn't gonna, I didn't have the strength to make a journey towards, like, trying to understand another individual within, because it took a lot of work to mm. even get to, like, True. having these two women. I wasn't interested in that, I think it was, it is still very stressful, but the only thing that we got in the house was time and intensity, so it felt, it, it didn't just feel like, I, I, I still feel, I still feel drawn to Alison at the capacity that I'm still, Willing to uh -huh. understand that. Yeah. I, had, I had every reason to approach that, within truth. And that was what I did. So, in your first week in the house, uh, you accused Shex of being a ball of contradictions. <laughs> I did? Yes, you did. So, wow. can you tell us what you meant? That. That's Nine weeks is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, a ball of contradictions. That was the first week in the house. Uh, I don't know what I meant. I had to like get context because I think things in there are within context it might have even been like a joke. Uh, and coming out now, I see how a lot of things that were actually just jokes in the house are taken pretty seriously. Ah, seriously. Yeah, it's, it's wild. <laughs> God, I don't, wanna, I don't even want to get any... Like when you guys come out and say it's just vibes, like, no, we took them serious. Come on, they take it, like, <laughs> yeah, but for real, it was... I, I, um, serious. I can't quite remember, so I, 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 I can't really can't make a comment on it, to be honest. Oh, okay, no problem. So one thing I really admire about you is your ginger, your mm. self-motivation. You know, yeah, they are that one housemate out of everyone in the house who just you know, get up, you know, regardless of what the situation is in the house, and just ginger himself. Yes, sir. I've seen you, you know, a couple of times, you know, when there is an argument in the house and you're eating by the dining, you're like, you're minding your own business. You just walk up to the sink in the kitchen, wash your plates, and then leave. Or maybe something is happening in the locker room and you're just, you know, all by yourself or something in the room like, you just mind your own business when there's, when there's a fight in the yeah. house, something like that. But talking about your ginger, it's on, it's on another level. How do you manage your energy in the house? Your energy is clashing with, you know, uh, when I say, okay, let me just use your level one house, for instance. Your energy is clashing with 11 other energies in the house. So how do you do it to just stand out? So the thing, the thing that I accustom that strength to is having to face an entire community. Um, I don't shy away from the fact that I'm coming from this long, even before I went into I was still staying in Oweroshoki. And I absolutely love the community. Shout and out to Oweroshoki. Shout out to Oweroshoki. <laughs> <Twally, twally. laughs> um, and, and I, I feel like I had an entire community to practice for that mm. um, because I still looked exactly like this. Even my community, I still wear my rings, go to the basketball court. And people really had words for that market women, children playing football on the street. Like everyone had words for me as to what they think uh, I am. And I still did not care. Like I still projected who it is that I wanted to be. Mm. And within building that strength and then getting into the house, I knew exactly what I wanted to be a part of and what I didn't want to be a part of. Mm. And I know for a fact, I don't function well in chaos. So every time there's chaos, I admit that that's what is happening out there, but I'm not a part of that. I'm not about to be a part of that. Yeah. And I respect that because people have their right to feel yeah. feelings and discussing or fighting out their differences as they decide but i don't deal with that in that way and i do not respect that so i will not be a part of it and just choose to not be a part of it i came in there to compete so when it was time to compete sorry I to cut you but there was a time i think the first week i think the first week or the second week when level two won their wager or something it was first week first week Chums, yeah no when level two won their wager it was first week okay and then, I want to wait a second. Yeah, exactly. And then you guys, you know, you guys, I mean, you would in particular actually congratulated them. So I think when you go back into the house and the other housemates were like lashing out on you, like, how would you celebrate them and all of that? I think you still wore that your suit or something. That was what, that was the outfit you wore that, yeah. that day. Yeah, the brown and remember. black. Exactly. Yeah, I remember quite well. Yeah. You remember yeah. exactly. Yes. And they lashed out on you, like, why are you? <laughs> And the energy Happy just flew for it. Energy And I was like, this is that, someone that was... celebrating you know the other group like for us for we the viewers we are watching a game 
But for you guys, you guys are competing against Believe each me. other. Yeah. So I'm sure your level, your other level uh, housemates were like, why are you, why are you celebrating them? Like, why are you happy for them? Why are you guys actually lost in that process? I mean, I mean, how did you feel? I mean, personally, I constantly said in my diary sessions, I want to believe that if you win, you expect everyone else to win. Even exactly. if you lose, you still have some people to win. So when they do, congratulate them, learning from them, knowing that you'll do better if you get a chance next time. Exactly. But you see that moment you just spoke about, I feel like that was such a defining moment because that was the moment that the energy shifted. I championed it mm. and then you see that competition that started from the second week. That was it. Mm. Chamsey triggered me. She said I wasn't doing as enough and I'm not one to not give my all to anything, a relationship, anything I choose to be a part of, I throw all of me into it. Mm. And I feel like I gave my best, like I try to organize a drama, try to direct it, I gave my all to it. I was playing the guitar, I played the drum. I felt like I gave my all and then mm. somebody accusing mm. me of not doing that just flip me like okay you want to see some other side mm. i got that to give as well and then that was the flip and then it became too competitive second mm. week we won i won hoh won the wager and level two i saw yeah. <laughs> i said these same videos of brian just saying like you see that can't <laughs> like, nah, he did not do that <laughs> so yeah i feel like that was a defining moment exactly. where energy that's, shifted that's yeah where, energy really shifted that's yeah. where they would obviously yeah. describe it because <laughs> <laughs> really you guys came back with that energy like the group came like the one group came back with the energy to always win the wager yeah i mean um, of course you guys are always competing at hoh levels and yeah. all of that but level two would win wager you guys would win hoh and all of that so they yeah there was a constant <laughs> conversation about how um level one house maybe rather they yeah. kept saying they'd rather be safe in the house stay in the house and then you know win Food. the wager yeah, mm. then, yeah they, would, they would rather starve than go home so we'll see yourself and chichi you know clash a few a few times in oh. the house <laughs> And the most noticeable one was during Athena has HRH in the house. So what was really going on between Athena? Yes, Athena doing HRH. Did you cry? Did you cry? So what was between yourself and Chichi? Um, I think it was just a personality uh, clash. I, I have an opinion towards Chichi's personality. I think she's very emotional. She's been through a lot and she approached things from an emotional state of view. And I'm not one to do that. I like to find balance to things. If I feel emotionally um, attached to certain things, I try to find logic to balance my emotion and then approach that from a balanced state of mind. But she just rides on emotion, in my opinion. And I feel like riding on, on, on emotion would just get you in trouble. Mm. And I don't respect that. Um, and I think based on that, and she would just say things. I feel like she also always wanted to have an opinion to those things, whether it was educated or not. She just wanted to say something and she wanted her voice to be heard. Like mm. I said, she's been through a lot. Like she said, um, in my opinion, I think that's just why she wants to, you know, speak out. I hope that people will listen to her because she doesn't like to not be heard. But I just feel like a lot of times, something, sometimes you don't, you don't have to speak on certain things if you don't have knowledge or So let's just talk about the famous food fight in the house. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you guys always fight because of food and mm -hmm. i think this started when the major happened yeah. you know so who were the key players and they all squabble i um, well, Shex and bella were i mean Shex was constantly in the middle of like fight for child and i think um i mean i know for a fact that he was doing it because he I, i'm sure he's a strong guy he could he could live on noodles i was living on noodles and uh uh gary the entire time from week one to like week six mm. until they started to do the collective uh food the collective, and whatnot. Yeah. yeah and i feel like he had the strength to do this as well we have to look out for his girl and all of that and they were always eating chicken they got used to that and they wanted to have that it wasn't available so we're trying to make sure it was available because he has to look out for his girl so it was just him looking out for his girl to be honest mm -hmm. okay so you've also one of the few housemates to win the title of hrh so you've already talked about it how you felt about it and uh, we also remembered where you resign from the role due to the stress from your fellow housemates. <laughs> yes. So you tell us about it. So um, I really believe that to lead, whoever it is that you put in charge to lead, has to allow you to lead for you to do the best at leading. And at that point in time, I, I sat there and I told them that the only reason, or the only reason I had to tell them like they should allow me to lead them was that I won the HOH and they didn't. And I, I saw the look on their face like, why are you pissing on us? Like we wanted that as well. And that wasn't enough reason to, <laughs> to lead. So I stepped down yeah. and then became a part of the crowd, hopefully. And I just wanted to learn how to be a leader to this collective. People, yeah. And I learned that and I, I stepped up the next day and we did an absolutely amazing job, won the wager. So I think my, my, my choice to- And actually, there's something I also like about you, which is your, 
your, your thing for hygiene in the house. Hmm. You sweep, you clean, you sweep, you clean, you sweep, you clean, you complain, you clean, you sweep, you clean. <laughs> so I'm, I'm being honest with you. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do because definitely. when you have other adults in the house, when you guys, you know, say, wash your plates, do wash your pot, do this, do that. If you use the sink, da -da 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 -da, you go on and on, and then the next thing, we see you with the broom. Yeah. Sweeping. We see you by the bean side, packing things. We see you doing stuff and all. So, I'm, and I'm sure I, for one, I'm just thinking, you know, from the top of my head that this is just who you are. Like, you're the kind of person that maybe if they don't do it, I'll just do it. And you know, I'm sure you're not doing it because you want, you want the biggie to give you like an extra room or extra pecs or anything. You're just doing it because, come on guys, we are in, we are guests in this house. So why would it be difficult for you guys to just clean up and all? So, I mean, did they ever, ever tell you thank you after no, cleaning? No, you? as a matter of fact, they told me I had a uh, uh, mental, Defect, uh, OCD. Yeah, I don't know what that means. But what? Yeah, that was what that was flying around. They said I just like it was to... flying around in the house. Yeah, level they, one or level yeah. two? Level but one. The house level one. Level, level one. one. Yeah. They Seriously. said I, I just like I, I can't stand like uh, not so clean environment. It was a mental thing. Yeah, but me, it's just you know I, I've had to take responsibility for a family that I'm the last from. So I understand responsibility for my space, for my environment, and that was all it was to me. Whatever anyone wants to define it to be, that's their, them using the their understanding to. to define it what they mm. understand that to mean. And I understand that. It's okay, so before Levels were merged, uh, Big Brother asked you to nominate two housemates from your level to descent to level two. Yeah. And you nominated, you nominated yourself. Yeah. So why did you want to move so bad? You know, at um, time? Uh, I went in the house wanting to compete. Yeah. And like you said, it was a constant fight to child. Yes. People were so comfortable because a couple of people were so motivated to always get the HOA. So they got really comfortable, like, yeah, you guys just go get the HOA. We'll be safe in the house four weeks straight. <laughs> you guys do the um, work. You guys do the work. <laughs> we'll be us. fine. And, and I wanted to compete. I wanted yeah. to see people who were willing to compete so that my energy is reciprocated to mm. me. Uh, as much as I want to give it out, you know, I have people around me who are also, you know, building towards that energy so I can grow because I just don't, I don't just want to give. I want to give in get as well mm -hmm. and i felt like i was giving a lot i wasn't getting the same energy exactly and i wanted that environment to change i really felt like if i had gotten an opportunity to go downstairs and compete against everyone with the same different energy like they would have really stepped up because now there's emmys down there and emmys will send us home if we don't step up and that would have been an absolute <laughs> Emmys, shame you know what let me be honest with you honestly if from the beginning of the show if you were in if you're in level two yeah, hey, I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. No, 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 yeah, no. People, like from the yeah. beginning of the show, like if maybe when you guys were doing the, the lockdown and you guys picked the cards and oh, you picked yeah, the colored cards, be, be massive, if you had yeah. picked the colored cards, yeah. definitely be in level two. And yeah. these guys, I mean, of course, we don't know who will be in level one, but definitely be competing against them. And I mean, yourself, um, Fina, did you yourself and Fina ever clash? No, as a matter of fact, when we got the chance to work together and we did absolutely well together, the two mm. alphas just accepting roles and whatnot. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, my second time in uh, HOH. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. All right, so what's next for MS now that you're out of the show? What's next for you? Ah, building platforms, to be honest. Uh, get in the bag. I need the money. You know what money. it is. And you want some easy. money in the house, guys. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what that is. I, I'm still, I, I, I need to ask. You don't know what? I, don't, I haven't found out what, how <laughs> Please much find out. I will. <laughs> find yeah, out, I please, guy. You made money. You made money. Please. Please, 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 don't tell me that. You made money. Wow. MS, MS, MS. Ah, no, 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 no. Please. Yeah, ah, no, appreciate no, no. it. Appreciate it. So, what was that? So, let me ask. Um, this question what was the inspiration behind the song one day mango <laughs> i've been through a lot like i said even going into the big of a house um i personally a lot of people thought i would get in i personally didn't think it um mm. because i've been through a lot i was still in a lot i needed to level up to be honest mm. and uh yeah that was part of the inspiration because i even getting in the house i saw how people could underestimate the capacity for work because they could see that whatever it is is triggering that is a lot that has happened and they won't be wrong to think that that's my truth and I accept it but that's also built a lot of capacity to put in the work and that was all it was you know just thinking back and realizing that I've been through a lot I deserve to you know I deserve the limelight and that was it like one day man will blow one day exactly. we, when money goes show you don't like blow. I'm able to I'm like, I don't blow you don't blow, I don't blow. <laughs> <laughs> like coming out like, you know, like you know I've been training for two days straight bro 
Your tribe is called the coolest tribe, the fan base. Yeah, it's called yeah. the coolest tribe. My, my account, my Instagram was the uh, coolest African king before I went in. Oh, before you went yeah, in, yeah, the coolest African king. A lot of people still recognize me by the name. Exactly. And, whatnot, so, and yeah. I look at, I mean, shout out to your handler, whoever your handler is. That, shout that, out to him. That is my guy. That is the guy that I work with, the same guy that I do everything. That is my partner. Like, we do a lot in the community. We've changed that entire community, just the both of us and a couple of other people, just, you know, taking responsibility for our community. Mm. The kids there, we're training them in the arts. And that's what I want to focus on. Like I said, building platform for the arts and sports. Mm. Yeah, that's my guy. That's awesome. My so, guy. I mean, the show is just one week to go. So, oh, it's, it's been days, it's been days, <laughs> yeah, a couple of days. Yeah, so, so uh, would you, who would you like to see win this season? I feel just like I feel like everybody has a potential towards it. Um, I, I, I mean, before I came out, I would have I told anybody Fina. Mm. But now I, w- I was watching the show and then seeing comments and people are switching sides by the daily. This person is going here. Why is he hating Chi Chi? So everyone right now stands a chance. Adekunle is brilliant. People are gravitating towards his intelligence. Fina is just a high priestess. Like exactly. I still feel like I still feel very strongly like Fina stands a huge chance. A lot of Shex fans, um, even my fans are gravitating towards Bella as well. Um, Daniela, there's a lot of controversy over her, and I feel like even negative energy can fly as well. So she still stands a chance, and things like Ibuka told them this week, into this week, like mm-hmm. it's, one week is a lot, a lot can change in a week. Exactly. So things are changing. Exactly. Uh, so Bella as well, goddamn, she's oh, she's getting better fans. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Everyone just stands a chance right now, to be honest. Brian is a strong, he survived eviction. Yeah. He's like Fina a couple of times. So exactly. you see, I don't even know where to put my eggs right now, but. <laughs> If I'm to pick one, I still I still think Phoenix stands a, a good chance. To be awesome, honest. awesome. Thank you so much, Hermes. So it's true they say time flies when you're having fun. And today, I mean, today has been amazing. Sitting with Hermes, who was just evicted from the Big Brother Niger level up house. So Hermes, before we leave, do you have any word to say to your coolest tribe? Oh, uh, you know, I want to take now. Try to in the game months. Thank you so much. I'll keep me in there for nine bare weeks. No we beans, people yeah. dipped, I still stayed in. So big up the uh try Kules. We still are here. Yeah, we still are here. <laughs> but still so much work to do. Um yeah. please stick with me. It's the journey just starting. Please stick with me. So much love they still have to give. Can't wait to share space with y'all. Peace. Love y'all. Yeah. Alright, so the journey is just starting for MS and stick with him. And of course, this is Unfiltered with Olero Supergirl, where we're bringing you the exclusive interviews from the Big Brother and Niger level of season. Please do not forget to follow MS yeah. on social media and do not forget to follow us on social media at Olero Supergirl. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Olero Supergirl TV. And until next time, we're bringing you exclusive interviews here on Unfiltered with Olero Supergirl. From me and MS, it's bye. Peace out. Peace out. Yeah, you know what it is.